Women Taking the Lead, Episode 11. Success is a journey. It's not a destination. And along the way, one thing I know to be true is you will often be misunderstood as you walk into your greatness. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Your future awaits, so let's get started. and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Marcia Bennett, who works with professional women, teaching them to be more intentional and resourceful. She provides interactive workshops and seminars on ways to use your time more effectively and stay organized. Marcia is an author and is currently obtaining a PhD in law, public policy, and administration. You go, girl. And she wants women to achieve the desired results they seek by applying proven strategies to do so. Marcia, that's just a teaser for everyone. So tell us more about you and where you came from. All right. So I'm a young entrepreneur. I, my background is teaching, so I have a master's in curriculum design, and as you said, I'm working on my PhD. Um, I'm the author of four books, and I'm also a classical pianist, and sometimes I leave that out when I tell people about myself, but ever since I was six years old, I took piano lessons, and I learned how to play classical music. But I grew up in a small town that I would say is not very progressive, And then I became a financial aid administrator. And along the way, I really faced a lot of different challenges that I noticed that men were not facing because I was a woman. Awesome. Wow. So you've been busy. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And you've had a lot of success in your life and you've definitely gained some confidence. But take us back to a time when you were playing small and you may not have been aware of it at the time. Share with us that that moment, that story, and the lessons you've learned. I was a teacher. I was teaching ninth grade world history and I was 22 years old. And so I undervalued my ability to connect with adolescents and be impactful. And so what I learned was you cannot ignore your gifts. My natural ability is to be a learner and then to explain and break down information in a way that connects with young people. And so my other gift is to integrate planning and action to achieve desired goals. And because it comes so natural to me, when I was a teacher, I guess I took it for granted. And it led me to get out of that field when I maybe could have continued on that path because I wasn't aware and conscious of my natural gifts. Mm. You know, and it's so true that sometimes when something comes to us very easily, we don't value it. Um, And it's also can be difficult for us to teach it because we haven't had to struggle with it or overcome anything. So there's nothing for us to really teach to other people. It's just something that clicked with us and we got it. So that makes perfect sense. So share with us. Well, actually, you know what? Let me let me take a step back. You've realized that now. How has that changed how you go about doing things? Now I'm more conscious about how I connect with people. Before I took it for granted that I could just have a conversation with someone. I could make them smile. I could make them learn something in that moment that they would take with them and use it and apply to their life. So when I meet people now, I'm more aware that, okay, I have an ability to make someone see something differently about themselves that they may have not seen before. So let me be present and in the moment instead of being in such a hurry just to say what I have to say and then go to the next thing. Oh, I really like that. So what I'm hearing is you're looking for what makes somebody special or unique or anything that stands out for you so you can share, reflect it back to them. They can see it. Awesome. I'm glad I went back. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Now share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake up call. Take us back to that moment and share with us the steps you took that led to your success. Okay. I realized when I was 26 years old, that there was more to life than just going through the motion. I was living at home with my parents, and I was like, I have got to take daily action steps to start a company. Now, I never thought that I could even be an entrepreneur or that I even wanted to, 
But because I'm a learner, I started studying, reading, listening to videos, going to webinars that I didn't even know existed, going to teleseminars. And then I realized that I was built and made for the lifestyle. So my self-doubt came in is that do people really want to hear what I have to say? That was my doubt. I had to overcome that. Do people really want to pay attention to what I have to say? And the answer came to me, yes, because I'm always having people ask me questions on a variety of topics at any given time of the day or night. It's so funny because apparently that that evidence was all around you. But we we all have that moment where our inner critic gets the best of us and, you know, you know, questions us like, who do you think you are? And why would anyone want to hear what you have to say? And I'm especially I'm thinking for you and correct me if I'm wrong. You were 24. You were probably like thinking, I'm like, you know, who, who's going to want to hear like kids who are in high school and college, they're so busy. What are, what are they going to want to hear? What I have to say? And people who are older than me aren't going to take me seriously. So, you know, it, our inner critic grabs at that information and just attacks us with it. But the reality was, was every day people were approaching you and asking for your perspective and your opinions, and they wanted to hear what you had to say about things. Exactly. I love that. What I want everyone to get is that there is no one way to lead. We're all different and we're going to lead differently. So Marcia, how would you describe your leadership style? My leadership style is definitely transformational and I'm transformational with what I call a trait approach. So let me explain. Okay. I use my inner and natural abilities to lead. So I kind of lead with motivation, right? I kind of lead with some intellect. I lead with integrity. So I lead as the person and the woman who engages and inspires people to take action. And I was not always aware that I led like that, (laughs) but that is my style. Oh, that's interesting. Can you give me an example of what that would look like when you're interacting with somebody. When I'm interacting with someone and I see they have a, they, they're they saying something that's negative, right? About either mm-hmm. themselves, a situation. I immediately try and shift my body language so that I appear more approachable. And then I try to think of something or something I've read or heard that's motivational to get them out of that negative thinking mindset and to get them to different, get a different perspective on the conversation. Mm, I love that. So it's a little bit of being the cheerleader, but also that um, kind of the Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Someone else called me that. Why did you say that? Someone told me that. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pulling from that age old wisdom, you know, and trying to give someone a different perspective, you know, and it's not hitting them over the head with it, but it's just trying to get them to to kind of see it for themselves. So that's what came to mind when <laughs> you were describing that. So that's great. Awesome. OK, so we're going to do a leadership roundup. So tell us. What is one practice that you have that makes you a better leader? I stay ahead of the curve. I always want to know what is the next thing, no matter what it is, so I can incorporate it into what I am already doing. What is something you're researching right now that's the next thing? Leadership. (laughs) Leadership. (laughs) Leadership trait. Yes. Anything in particular? Soft skills. What makes someone the ideal leader, right? Is it? skill set? Is it degree? Is it education? Is it experience? Or is it soft skills? And so the further I dig into soft skills, once again, soft skills kind of go back to the trade approach. It's kind of like the natural inclinations you have. And then if you do not possess those natural abilities, soft skill training then comes in and teaches you how to refine and modify them so you can be the best representation of yourself. I love that. Now you're speaking my language (laughs) (laughs) because I do, I do leadership coaching and I work with small business owners and corporate executives. And especially when I'm working with the small business owners, people will say, oh, well, you're a business coach, right? You know, when they're questioning me and I'm like, well, (laughs) not in the traditional sense. My focus is more on the leadership skills, their ability to communicate, build relationships and influence people. And it starts with themselves. 
you know, their ability to, to lead themselves first so that they can lead others. And it's always, sometimes I get the head cock response, you know, where people are like, huh. And they're like, (laughs) and small business owners hire you to do this. And I'm like, Yes, definitely. Because the better you are at the soft skills, the better you are at leading your team, managing vendors, the the different aspects of the business, associates, referral partners, like your ability to communicate and have strong relationships with people affect every part of your business. So, So I love that you're researching this. What is your favorite healthy food? Strawberries. I love strawberries. (gasps) Ooh. I love strawberries too. Is there any, now, do you like to eat them raw or is there any favorite recipe or way you like to prepare just them? Raw. Just fresh strawberries. I love that. Keeping it clean. And knowing what you know now, if given a chance to go back and do anything differently, what would you change? I would hire a life coach. And I tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college, I did not even know that professional coaches existed. I didn't know there was a such thing as a life coach. But I think looking back, a life coach would have been able to help me achieve three things. I think they would have, one, been able to help me identify my strengths and work towards refining those. I think they would have helped me to identify my limiting beliefs and work to overcome those. And then I think the life coach would help me to create a sense of urgency in reaching my goals versus me waiting for things to happen and just naturally unfold. Okay, Marcy, I'm going to ask the question everyone's thinking right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've already accomplished a lot. At such a young age, and here you are saying, I would have hired a coach so I could have done more, faster. So clearly, there's something behind this. (laughs) You Okay, so I I told you before the interview, I tend not to throw curveball questions at people because I hate, you know, my thing is I don't like to make people super uncomfortable, but I can get over it. (laughs) So clearly, you have something big, some vision you have for your life where you feel like right now you could be further ahead. So tell us about that. So the life coach concept comes in because if I had identified early on what I really truly wanted to do, the gift that I have, which is empowering women, which is empowering people, right? If I had identified that in my early twenties, I wouldn't have wasted as much time trying different careers, trying different jobs, trying different things to fit into a box when I know I wasn't made to fit in, when I know I was meant to stand out. And where are you go? Where do you see, like you talk about empowering women. Mm -hmm. Do you have a clear path? Do you see on that? Or is it one of those things like for myself, sometimes I feel like I'm taking a step as the, as the stone is appearing in front of me. Yeah. (laughs) The roadmap is, is for me to be that that speaker, that inspirational speaker, that, that motivational speaker, the person that everyone's like, I have to hear her. I have to hear what she's thinking about this week, or I have to hear what's the newest and greatest revelation of this year. Yeah. Like she's on, yeah. she's always researching uh-huh. the latest thing. I love that. Okay. Says, You're always on to something. I just want to know what it is. <laughs> that, that's me. I'm always on to something. <laughs> I'm putting you in my speed dial now. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so this is great because now we're going to, I want to ask, what is one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about? My professional speaking career, I have booked like eight speaking engagements in the past 25 days. <gasps> and <laughs> you. Yes. And it's, it's probably because I do have that drive, that mentality that if I really laser in and focus on what I really want, I take every action step to get there and I make no excuses. Because you can either have excuses or results. You can't have both. And so I'm working on a live event for women where we're going to work on living on purpose and living with intention instead of living accidentally. Wow. So you've got. okay. so (laughs) I love this. You're working on your Ph.D. Yes. You're researching the latest developments in leadership. You've You've got eight speaking engagements going on and you're starting to create a live event for women. Yeah. Have I missed anything? Are you writing a book right now too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The name of the book will be How to Win at the Game of Life. That's the name of the book. 
I love it. And people are going to want to read that yeah. book after listening to this. Okay. So what I know everyone is thinking right now is how does she do it? How does she get all the time? And I know that it's part of what you teach in your professional, but could you share with us um, maybe a couple of quick tips of how, how to find, you know, get more time back in the day um, so that you can start moving some of these projects you dream about doing forward. And I know one of the things you've already said was stop making excuses, right? The moment you find yourself saying, I'm tired or I'm busy or I've had a hard day or, you know, I just don't have it in me right now, like stop right there. But it, are there is there anything else you can offer us that will give us um, some insights to how to get that going? I would say one, get very clear on the project and the end goal. Some people work from the start to the end and some people work from the end to the beginning. And so I work Either way, it depends on what I'm working on. So I sit down and I write it all out. This is step either one through five or five through one. So you want to plan. That's the number one thing I tell people. Like A lot of people like to skip the planning and go into action. And then they realize once they got into action, they missed some things along the way because they didn't plan. So don't fail to plan. Just plan, right? I would say switch your physiology. A lot of times if you're like, I don't feel like doing this, or I really don't want to read these 30 pages, and I really don't want to write this blog post, right? Switch your physiology. So go for a walk, stand up, do yoga, do something that's totally different that's not having you in that same positioning. And then you'll come back to it and you'll have a refreshed mindset to do it. And then another strategy that I use is working in time blocks. And it works like a charm if you stick to it. So I block off maybe 30 minutes to work on something then I'll do something else. Then I'll block off 90 minutes to work on something else. And in that time frame, there are absolutely no distractions, no interruptions, because people in my cipher know in those 90 minutes, that's what I'm going to get done. I knew I needed to have you as a guest on my show. And I told you that in my email. I was like, I need to have you on my show. And I didn't even know this was going to happen. And that's why, thank you, Intuition, for always working with me. So, okay, before we say goodbye, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. To be great is to be misunderstood. I read this quote about four years ago, and it literally brought tears to my eyes because I've always been told, you're great at this, you're great at that. But what I really felt when people would say that is that I'm drastically misunderstood because to me, success is a journey. It's not a destination. And along the way, one thing I know to be true is you will often be misunderstood as you walk into your greatness. It is so true. It's so true. I think you're going to, you'll have, fine, you'll have brought more than a few people to tears yeah. with that, that quote. That is very moving. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, what is the best way? Yeah. As I compose myself, let me just pull it together. Lastly, what is the best way for our listeners to connect with you? They can connect with me on my website. Uh, it's www.livetomanage.com. And the two is T-O. And I have a lot of useful content and resources that I share on work-life integration for women. Because I don't call it work-life balance. I call it work-life integration. It all has to come together. Because <laughs> yeah, there's no really such thing as balance. No. It's always it's always being a little tipsy. That's like You know what life balance is? Have you ever been on the playground where it's almost like a disc and it just swivels yeah. and it just goes around and around and you're constantly having to shift your balance from the front of your foot to the side, to the back, to the side, to the front. That's life balance right there. <laughs> you know? So if you're looking for anything that's standing still and everything feels great and coming together, forget that. I like life integration. I like that new concept. I think I'm, we're going to have to hashtag that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Marcia, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Thank you very much. Wow. Can you see why I needed to have Marcia on this podcast? And I hope you got as much from this conversation with her as I did because it was amazing. And I've been using her tips and strategies ever since. And you can find all the resources mentioned in this episode at womentakingthelead.com, or you can use the short link, which is womentl.com. And you can find Marcia in the podcast tab. And if you have a few moments and you're not driving, if you could head over to iTunes and leave a rating 
rating and review for this episode. I would so appreciate it. It gives me insight into what you like and what you would like to see more of in the show. And it also enables others to find the show more easily. So thank you so much. Thank you all for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. And to strengthen you on your own leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining me, and here's to your success.